We continue tonight looking at the Psalms during this Lenten time of reflection and preparation for Easter. And tonight we're going to look at Psalm 102. The inscription we see at the beginning says, A prayer of an afflicted person who has grown weak and pours out a lament before the Lord. Now since there is a verse number on here, a lot of times we skip it, ignore it, um, don't think it's inspired scripture. But in the Hebrew Bible, it actually is a numbered scripture. When you go to translate Hebrew text, compare it to the English, all the numbers are normally off one because these inscriptions appear on a lot of the Psalms, but we just haven't numbered them. So this inscription is part of the inspired scripture, the inspired word of God. And what I really like about this very brief description is that we don't know too much about what is afflicting this person. It could be somebody who has just gone through a great loss, or it could be somebody who has realized the weight of their own sin. It could be somebody who has been affected by somebody else's sin, or it could just be a transient state, something that temporarily afflicted them, or their life has been filled with pain and grief for years. This is a psalm dripping with pain. There's no sugarcoating. And yet, at the end of it, it still affirms the goodness of God so let's dive into the Psalms today. Hear my prayer, Lord. Let my cry for help come to you. Do not hide your face from me when I am in distress. Turn your ear to me when I call. Answer me quickly, for my days vanish like smoke. My bones burn like glowing embers. The Psalm is a prayer. It's a cry for help. Now I've thought a lot about prayer recently with having gone through a uh, sermon series here recently where we went, we kind of dissected the Lord's Prayer. Um, and the staff just read a book by Timothy Keller on prayer. And we would discuss it as we ate lunch together. And there's a lot of rules and guidelines for prayer. And this is how to pray better and more effectively and all of that. This psalm kind of breaks all the rules. You know, we look at the Lord's Prayer, Our Father who art in heaven, a very... Um, you know, putting the Lord first and realizing his supremacy first and then going on to our needs and kind of the process that takes. This prayer skips all those rules. It spends its time complaining, inventing, and being honest about the pain that the person is in. While those formulas and ideas about prayer help and they're great for learning, some days you just have to to tell God how you feel. It's just about being honest. And today to, is a good day just to look at yourself. Is there anything I'm not being honest about in my own life? Is there anything I'm not being honest with God about? Now, as we continue the Psalm, he continues to talk of his great pain. My heart is blighted and withered like grass. I forgot to eat my food. In my distress, I groan aloud and am reduced to skin and bones. I am like a desert owl, like an owl among the ruins. I lie awake. I have become like a bird alone on a roof. All day long, my enemies taunt me. Those who rail against me use my name as a curse. For I eat ashes as my food and mingle my drink with tears. Because of your wrath, for you have taken me up and thrown me aside. My days are like evening shadow. I wither away like grass. But this next portion of the psalm comes the turn where we focus no longer on the pain but the truth that God is still in control. And as we look on pain in our own life we have to remind ourselves continually sometimes, that God is still in control. This reminds me of Paul talking in 2 Corinthians about taking every thought captive. If we look at 2 Corinthians 10, 5, it says, We demolish arguments in every pretension that sets itself up against the knowledge of God, and we take captive every thought to make it obedient to Christ. Having stray thoughts, intrusive thoughts, depression, issues we have to work through, 
isn't the problem here. It's when we let those be the only thoughts that we have. It's when we don't balance our temporary pain, our temporary state with the truth that God is in control. If you want to know the secret to taking every thought captive, to being able to realign the truth in your life with scripture, the answer is to spend more time in scripture. Because what we spend time in is what we think about. If I have a TikTok song stuck in my head, it's because I've watched that TikTok a lot. If I have a verse stuck in my head that every time I start to get angry about something or every time I start to feel bad about something that I'm able to bring that verse to mind, that's able to change the way I'm thinking. Now there are two things that take, that bring comfort to the afflicted in this psalm. The first is the recognition that God is eternal. And the second is the belief that there will be deliverance from the situation they are in. Let's continue reading now in verse 12. But you, Lord, sit enthroned forever. Your renown endures through all generations. You will arise and have compassion on Zion, for it is the time to show favor to her. The appointed time has come. For her stones are dear to your servants. Her very dust moves them to pity. The nations will fear the name of the Lord. All the kings of the earth will revere your glory. For the Lord will rebuild Zion and appear in his glory. He will respond to the prayer of the destitute. He will not despise their plea. That last verse, verse 17, he will respond to the prayer of the destitute. He will not despise their plea. To me, that sounds like a promise. One that we can hold on to that even when we're afflicted, even when we tell God about our affliction, he hears it and he cares. This psalm reminds me so much of Job, the pain, the the need for God to act, and yet the ultimate acceptance that God is in control and that our understanding is finite. Continue in verse 18. Let this be written for a future generation, that a people not yet created may praise the Lord. The Lord looked down from his sanctuary on high. From heaven he viewed the earth to hear the groans of the prisoners and release those condemned to death. So the name of the Lord will be de declared in Zion and his praise in Jerusalem when the peoples and the kingdoms assemble to worship the Lord. Now here, we have a momentary break from, from the remembering the goodness of God. And in verse 23, it says, In the course of my life, he broke my strength. He cut short my days. But then once again, right away, the next verse. So I said, Do not take me away, my God, in the midst of my days. Your years go on through all generations. In the beginning you laid the foundation of the earth, and the heavens are the work of your hands. They will perish, but you remain. They will wear out like a garment, like clothing you will change them, and they will be discarded. But you remain the same, and your years will never end. The children of your servants will live in your presence. Their descendants will be established before you. This whole psalm kept bringing to mind one verse, one phrase from the, the message in the book of Hebrews that I wanted to share with you in closing. Hebrews 12, 3 says, When you find yourself flagging in your faith, go over that story and item by item, that long litany of hostility he plowed through, that will shoot adrenaline into your souls. See, we have the story of Jesus. We have the pain that he went through, the, the people who betrayed him, as we've talked about on Sundays, the physical, the mental, the spiritual anguish he went through for you. 
And if there's anything that we can take away from today, it's that God cares. God listens and God knows what it's like. So today I want you to remember that. Take captive those thoughts that aren't productive and just take a few minutes to pray and to remind yourself that God is in control. Lord, we thank you that you are in control, that you are eternal. We thank you for your scripture, which brings us hope, which brings us peace, which brings us life. We thank you for your sacrifice. We thank you for this time of year where we're able to set aside a few extra minutes, Lord, and remember your sacrifice and remember the pain that you went through leading up to that, Lord. I pray that everyone who listens and everyone who takes time out of their day to prepare their hearts for Easter, Lord, pray that they are renewed that they're able to have that adrenaline through their soul, that they go over that story, Lord. I pray you bring hope and peace to those who are afflicted, that you bring to mind your joy, Lord, and that you bring to our minds when we're afflicted the peace and the ultimate truth that you are in control. In Jesus' name.